Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast. We are in the middle of July. This uh, 2024 draft class has come and gone. So we're in a bit of a, a rut here. We're in the middle, right? Uh, so we figured, why not give you guys a preview of what's to come? The 2025 draft class. Okay, we didn't rank them. They haven't played a game this season yet. But we're going to give you some names to keep an eye out on. Okay, Grant was gracious enough to prepare 25 players that you should keep an eye on this season. So without further ado, let's get into it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. With our first pick in the 2022 NHL Draft, the Canadiens de Montréal sont fiers de repêcher from the Slovakian national team and TPS Turku, Yuri Slavkovsky. The sickest NHL draft and scouting podcast. It's going to be sick. All right, a burnt up producer Shane here, joined by uh, a wonderful, my wonderful co-host to my uh, to my left or to my right, however you want to look at it. Grant McCagg, how are you today? Sorry, did you say you're burnt? I am definitely burnt. The lighting is is doing me good right now, but uh, <laughs> oof, spent a bit too much time outside. <laughs> oh no! Did you fall asleep? And uh... no, listen, I'm just too good for sunscreen. Like I put it on, but That's it doesn't fun. do anything. I'm just I'm built different, Grant. What what can you say? What can you say? I had a buddy one time. He went, uh, I think I don't know, it was Mexico or somewhere south, anyways, and he showed up at my door. These were back in the college days, and I guess. I don't know. He started drinking like tequila of some description at like 9 a.m. And by about two, he was done. And he decided to uh, kind of pass out underneath a tree. Well, the only problem with that, like he was in the shade when he passed out, but he sort of remembers people trying to wake him up and stuff. But uh, they had to, he had to go to nurse uh, on the plane and the whole works back, you know, on the way back. He was in rough shape, so whatever right you do, Mexico. don't uh, don't pass out under a tree in the middle of the day in Mexico, thinking that you're going to be fine because the the sun moves, right? You know, well, what? the earth moves you know, anyway. Yeah, for those of you tuning in to the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast, you don't just get prospect news and, and updates; you get life advice from Grant That's right. here. The, right. you know priceless priceless stuff when in mexico don't sleep under a tree duly noted i love it i love it okay. all right uh before we get into this 25 player player names which by the way at the end of the season it's going to be completely different right this is it's just in middle of july we want to pump out some content for you guys we enjoy talking prospects we figured why not release this list but before we do of course grant got to give a big thank you to our sponsors who help us make this show possible. And we have to start with Betway. Betway is a leading global online betting and gaming brand. Follow your gut instinct. Go with Betway. Go on betway.com or scan the QR code to join the action. Must be 18 plus and play responsibly. We also have to give a big thank you to Insta Customs. Uh, Insta Customs are proud supporters of Recruits and the Sick Podcast, Recruits Draftcast. The highest rated apparel print shop in Canada at 4.9 Google stars. Specializing in direct-to-garment printing and embroidery. Located just minutes away from the Bell Centre on Rue Stanley in Montreal. Please visit their website at instacustoms.com. And our newest sponsor, Cheapest T-Shirts. Um, ch cheapest rock bottom apparel wholesale prices in all of Canada. T-Shirts. At 247, hoodies at 1395, and crewnecks at 783, and much more. 36 different clothing brands and over 600 different products. No minimum order required to get the cheapest prices. Order today, ship today, get it tomorrow. Why are you paying more for nothing? Head on over to cheapest t-shirts.ca. All right. Oh, now, I Grant, just remembered we got uh, I got the promo codes from Nick there. So uh fantastic. Gotta send that to you and Tony and, and Yellow and Sammy. We're all getting Great uh, news. 
getting some gear from cheapest t-shirts it, it's nice looking stuff so it's great stuff we've been rocking it for for a while here so it's uh yeah. it's awesome cheapest t-shirts it's the customs good quality all right yeah. grant you were uh, gracious enough today uh, on on this beautiful friday to prepare this list for us yeah so we'll start with the first half kind of split this thing in half uh we'll start with the first half of names and you can just run through them and and give us your your sure. early thoughts on why we should keep an eye out on these guys. So let's pull that thing up if we can. Beautiful. There it is. All right. Yeah. Floor is yours. This, this is in no particular order. It's other than it being alphabetical. Exactly. Um, we saw Aitchison at the uh, – Keshawn Aitchison at the um, yeah. U18s. He was there as an underage, and um, I thought performed quite well. He had a regular role and uh, mm -hmm. looked pretty good. And I think he solidified himself as a uh, as a first round candidate for this upcoming draft. I think uh, early on here, what it looks like is that uh, it's maybe not as uh, strong with the, with defensemen at the top of the draft as it was last year. At yeah. this, um, so a kid like Aitchison, you never know. Like if he has a really productive year. He's got some grit to his game too. He may, uh, you know, he may end up being a top twenty uh, prospect in this draft. So, good Lots looking, uh, good looking defense prospect. Prospect as is the next kid who's uh, playing in the um, USHL, uh, Sasha Bomidian. Um, he's uh, he's, you know, anytime you can go into the into the ushl and at 16 have a regular role and put up uh, decent point totals um on defense it's not typically a, a young league so he's caught the eye of a lot of uh scouts already and look for him to uh to be a first round candidate for sure again this year or two now next up we've got two uh two kids from the queue there's actually three um Three Quebecois. There we go. Could be, uh, could be first round yeah. candidates yeah. this year, which it's been a long time. You know, I can't think of the last time that three went in the first round. So this is, uh, it's looking like a nice crop in uh, in Quebec this year. About time. Uh, About time at the top of the draft. So that's nice to see. Because I, I mean, BLB, I'll get to a few games in. Uh, I'll hopefully do a couple double headers this year. Go to a Laval game and a BLB game. Catch both, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, typically, uh, well, you know, hopefully you can you can get it when the when there's uh, an afternoon game and then a night game. Maybe even I'll do what I'll do is a couple of halves games on a Saturday if uh, BLB is playing. You know, Saturday afternoon, which they often are. The Q games are often in the in the middle of the day on the weekends. So, um, but Justin Carboneau, I was speaking with a NHL scout today who who mentioned both him as, and Gite as as kids that they uh, that they're impressed with. Um, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna be going to a few more games in Gatineau this year, especially with Chikudami. Well, with BLB being in the same division as Gatineau. I'll get to see the I'll get to see them more often. So I'll have my eye on Carbono and have a good have some good scouting reports, uh live scouting reports on him. Uh yeah. put up good point totals. I unfortunately I didn't uh I didn't get time to get all their uh their their stats in here for this. Um kind of scrambled to get it together today. Um but uh I think he had somewhere around 30 goals. And I mean, as a 16 year old, when you hit uh, 30 goals in the uh, CHL, that's pretty impressive. So, yeah. uh, same deal with the De Denoye. Um, we saw him obviously at the at the U18s. Didn't look out of place, mm -hmm. and he also had you know 30 somewhere in the 30 goal range. Uh, decent sized kids got some grit to his game, as we noticed. Uh, uh, at the U18s, he was uh, he wasn't afraid, you know, going up against uh, older guys. So um, there's different elements to his game, and he's a he's a nice looking prospect for the draft. 
Victor Eklund's uh, um, really, really nice looking prospect that, uh, that, that played some, uh, you know, higher level hockey at, at his age. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's really, really on the radar. I think um, Sweden's going to have a little stronger, a little more him and Frondell, who is just uh, two down there. They're both really legitimate uh, prospects. So I know uh, there was no, I don't think there was any first round guys or top 30 guys from Sweden in the past draft. Uh, that's going to, that's going to be different this year. Those two kids look for them, look for them to be uh first rounders. If mm -hmm. not, they're in close Conrad Fonder. Um, he's the first of, we're going to see quite a few names out of, uh, the development program. Um, they've got a, they've got a great class this year. It's strong in the U S last year was a little weak compared to some recent seasons with the uh with the american prospects but this year there's a pile of nice uh looking ones uh in in addition to hagan's obviously um so uh look i'm gonna be watching a lot of tape on uh on the development team this year because they've got a they probably got about six to eight kids that may go in the first round wow so they'll be heavily scouted again this year so <laughs> Wow, which is nice. I mean, you get to see, you know, get to see a lot of the top prospects in one game. It scouts don't mind that at all. Trust me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. So uh, Fonderick's a good. Uh, I'm not exactly sh sure how you say that, and uh, I'll probably butcher a few of these names because I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't been listening and watching them too closely yet. But. Uh, um, you know, Frondell, as I mentioned, uh, one of the two Swedes, it's pretty highly regarded. Uh, Emil Gite is a, uh, Chikudin has got a couple of kids that, um, that might, uh, that, that are worth watching this year. They, I think they had like four first round picks a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they really loaded up and a couple of these kids are, are panning out already. So, Chikudu Mia will be a uh, a good watch this year in the queue. Mm -hmm. Probably get more scouting than any any place. Which, uh, to the chagrin of a lot of scouts, that the trip to Chikudu Mia in the snow blizzard didn't. <laughs> is, Ooh. Ooh. You know, it's a long one. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of scouts have uh, have ran into some really tough uh, road trips going up to Chikudu Mia in the middle of winter and. Seems to always snow, but uh, <laughs> they'll they'll be uh, they'll be closely watched this year. And then, I mean, if I did do a ranking, he'd be right at the very top. Obviously, uh, Hagen's yeah. uh, Boston College, not the biggest kid. So, you know, like if you were to say, well, where would you place him in this past year's draft? You might not have him. Uh, you know one or two or whatever i mean i'd have demodov ahead of him but i guess i i, I guess i'd draft him ahead of uh the, the kid that ended up going to but that's another story <laughs> but you know i mean there's a couple of i'd put him just a hair below those those two guys as far as uh nhl potential goes but that's no slight on him they're just i think demodov and celebrini are going to be stars so yeah. uh i mean hey Higgins might be as well. We saw, we saw what he can do at the. I mean, I've been seeing it for two years. He's been playing with the under eighteen team on and off, and uh, playing ahead of his, uh, you know, ahead of his peers. So, uh, just a dynamite, smart, skilled, uh, competitive, all around uh, center. That's going to uh, going to go. I would, uh, I'd be shocked if it's not top three in the draft. At we'll, least, we'll, yeah. We'll see. I mean, maybe the size thing, it always seems to hinder guys a bit, but when you're special talent, just like we saw with Bedard, scouts will make an exception, and uh, that will be the case with Higgins. Uh, Hensler's a defenseman on the, on the development team that 
he'll get uh, he'll get a really close look. We saw him. We got to see him last year playing for the U. I you know he played a fair bit for the U18 team. Um, good solid prospect was at the U18s. Uh, Will Horkoff, you may recognize that last name. And yes, that is Sean Horkoff's wow. son. Ah, making us feel old. Jesus. Yeah, six foot four. <laughs> uh, got a rocket of a shot. Um, scored like 80 goals for Detroit Little Caesar as a like a midget. So oh. talent, lo loads of talent. And he's a kid that I think you may see just uh just kind of like Caden Lindstrom, just keep climbing up the draft board as, as the year goes along. Yeah. Um solid first round draft uh candidate at this point. And uh he'll be somebody that the scouts really like, I think, because there's a lot of uh a lot of attributes there. Um I had a good look at this next kid, actually, Benjamin Keevan. And I'm glad I I did because I just said Kevin, but they do pronounce it Kevin. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. He's a uh, he's fast. I had I had a look. I did a couple of videos, and we'll be posting them up. Uh, what an exciting exciting thing to announce, by the way, is that uh, going to start posting uh, prospect videos on on our Draftcast uh, YouTube Draftcast. Channel. Yep. So starting Monday, look out for it. Go there. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, got the notifications, go ding the bell. Uh, we'll, uh, we're going to start and it's, uh, I think we're going to call it grant sick draft prospects or something along those lines. So S Sammy's uh, handling all that. We got, yeah, yeah. Sammy. He'll, he'll, <laughs> that's yeah. Sammy's department, but I think I actually came up with it. So believe it or not, there we go. uh, and he said, I like it. So when a Sammy says, I like it, that's, you know, that's usually, that's Lots the golden, approval. that's what you want to hear. So um, it'll be a uh, playlist on Recruit's uh, YouTube channel. And I am going to post hundreds of videos free for everyone to see this year. We want to drive traffic. We want to, we want to have the busiest hockey channel out there. And so support us. The more you support us, the more, the more stuff will get up there for you. So uh, now uh, he's fast. This kid, he scored like uh, fifty some points and close to thirty goals in the USHL as a sixteen year old, sixteen seventeen year old, which isn't that common. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't forget they don't play, you know, as many games as the CHL guys. So uh, anytime you put up that kind of point total like i think connelly reminds me a little bit of connelly actually the speed this kid can fly um very nice passer good shot love his offensive tools so i had a um i had a scout uh based in the u.s that, that threw that threw his name out there as maybe he's a first round candidate and i went and had a look and i texted him back said no maybe he's about it this kid's uh this kid's legit, so I'll be keeping a close eye on him all year. Uh, again, another American. So mm -hmm. I like the uh, I like the American crop this year so far. Uh, how it's looking early on, and we'll end this uh, with uh, with a kid that uh, not Parker, it's Porter Martone. <laughs> uh, he's uh, well, I, I mean, anyone that follows. Uh, CHL, OHL, and uh, the U18 knows all about this kid because he played. He played at Halenka and was great last summer, and then played again. Played again this uh, this past spring for Canada's yeah. uh, gold, double gold medal winning uh, U18 teams, and he was uh, he was terrific in both events. Um, a candidate to go first overall. He's in the top five mix at this point. You know, he's right up there with, uh, with a couple more that are coming and Hagen's as, uh, yeah. as being legitimate top five, uh, prospect for the, for the draft. Beautiful. All right. So let's head into the, the second half of our, uh, our 25 list. I'll let you uh, take it away. 
Okay, Cole McKinney, another. <laughs> and, and it's funny, like, I didn't get, as soon as I, I get to see all the tape on these guys, I'll get their specific positions. But uh, I'm sure not every one of these guys is a uh, center, <laughs> but they list, when in doubt, sites list them as centers, right? Um, I mean, there was, I already corrected a couple that said center, and I lo- went and looked quick look at instat and uh took about eight face-offs last year so okay no he's not a center you know if you take eight face-offs the whole entire year you're not a center <laughs> but uh you certainly uh these guys like misa and mcqueen you know uh, most of these guys are centers um mm-hmm. mckinney mckinney's one of several good-looking center prospects that are on the development team i'm sure one of them is probably gonna have to end up on the wing because they're all top six talent you know top six talent but we've seen it before with uh uh the development team like the year uh jack hughes turcott uh zegris they had a few guys that uh there was another one then they all were kind of centers going into the year and (laughs) So they had to, you know, move move kids around and and find the right uh, the right recipe there. But they had third line guys that had no business playing third line center on a junior team, but they're just so stacked. And that's yeah. going to be the case this year. Hmm. Third line center on the U.S. development team. I mean, it's going to be scary. They'll be tough. They'll be tough to beat again, as they have been the last few years. You know, so. Uh, uh, Roger McQueen, McQueen's, uh, again, we saw him at two events. We saw him in the summer. We saw him in the spring. Uh, ended up getting injured and uh, missing missing the uh, end of the, the tournament, unfortunately, this past year. But he's a big kid that I think you'll, you'll see him break out this year offensively and that he'll likely put up uh, – really good numbers in Brandon he'll have a uh, he'll have an offensive role and um, good skater l- loads of potential he's another kid that don't be shocked if he ends up being in the top five uh, mix come uh, come draft time did you get some uh, noxema on your skin or anything like that no in my eyes yeah you burn it eh? okay well we'll uh, <laughs> Hang in there. I feel for you. No, no um, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just had to okay. rub, rub a little bit. <laughs> uh, Misa, again, another, uh, you know, there's some familiar names here that follow Canadian hockey, mm-hmm. uh, junior hockey. He he uh, he was a uh, an exceptional status player, so he's already been, you know, been been through the, through a couple of years in the, in the OHL, one, already won a, <laughs> you know what what memorial a cup champion memorial yeah. cup before uh before his draft year um i mean uh, another candidate for the top five right so there's a few yep. like the top tens looking pretty strong again this year uh um loads of talent we'll see again he'll get more offensive opportunity this year with a lot of guys uh like beck and and uh Hunter Hate and guys like that all leaving. He'll be uh, given probably, you know, first power play, first line center uh, role and look for him to put up big points this year. He's he's just uh, starting to uh, scratch the surface there with his potential. So it'll be exciting to follow him this year in Saginaw. Mm-hmm. Be nice, to, Also nice for Saginaw to have another top 10 candidate that's two years in a row that's pretty uh that's a feather in their their cap for sure william moore (laughs) another really talented uh center in the you know on the u.s development team imagine if hagan's was of age going back there they'd be unbeatable but he's he's heading to boston college and he's a you know he's an overager well a late birthday or whatever you want to call it that and he's ready for college, so uh, he, he obviously couldn't even – not eligible to play for the development team, so he's heading off to college, but he's ready. He'll be good. Yeah. 
right from the what a team. What a team that's going to be, eh? Boston yeah. College again, again. Aye, uh, aye, aye. Yeah, for sure. Um, Jake O'Brien. Now there's a hockey name for you. Uh, <laughs> lots of there's been a lot of O'Briens through the years. You know those Irish. You know the O'Brien uh, stock there is pretty. Got got some hockey stock in there for sure. Yeah. Um, he's another put up really good point totals. There's a few CHLers that 50 plus points. When you do that as a 16 year old, it's uh, it's awfully promising. You know, there's a good chance he hits 80 plus this year. Um, good sized kid played in Bradford. Uh, good, you know, a great uh, great program there. Uh, great organization. So he'll uh, he'll be looked at very closely and looks like a. I suspect he, a lot of these names, the Canadian names, will be uh, playing uh, at the Halink, upcoming Halinka. Um, Hopefully, yeah. Reshny is another one. Great stats in Victoria. It's nice to see Victoria. They haven't had a lot of a lot of good uh, draft prospects in the last decade. So nice to see them getting a uh, getting a kid that's legit that you know has a has an opportunity to perhaps be top 10 scouts don't mind that trip to victoria you know oh we got to go to victoria well okay let's uh you know middle of winter when it's invariably above zero there uh they don't mind it they don't mind heading heading across on the uh, ferry at all to to go uh to go see the odd game you know they don't get as much because they're kind of off the beaten track they pro they don't normally get as many uh many views as a lot of the obviously kids in vancouver and such but uh crossover scouts will be making a special trip to the island this year mm -hmm. see that kid he's legit um we finally get to a, a rusky another uh, Ivan. Yes, uh, Ryabkin, he's uh, he's a really talented uh, kid. Um, we've seen him uh, put up really good numbers last year, excellent numbers in the MHL at his age. Uh, um, legitimate top 10 candidate. Um, be doing a lot of video scouting of him. Won't be getting to see him, obviously, <laughs> in any tournaments or anything, but... Uh, yeah. The scouts will have to rely on their Russian guys, but they'll be doing a lot of video scouting on him this year because he's a he's a very good prospect out of uh, Dinamo in uh, in the MHL. Um, Matthew Schaefer, very very uh, solid defense prospect. Um, he played a top four role at uh, at the U18s for Canada. As an underager, that's that's pretty that's pretty uh, impressive. Yeah, uh, look for him to uh, to have a really solid year this year. Uh, him and uh, Spence there, they'll be getting lots of views. Um, Spence, obviously, just like uh, McQueen and uh, Misa and and uh, or sorry, not Misa, but McQueen and um, Martone did the double. Did the double as a as an underager last year? Played at the U18s in the summer and in the spring. Um, I loved them in, I loved them in both. He's maybe, maybe there's some other prospects with uh, more offensive upside, but this kid is going to help you win. He's oh, yeah. uh, like if you've got this guy on your second line down the road. He's helping you win playoff games in, in a, so many ways. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if I have him as a top ten prospect. I just love the kid. I just, uh, I think he's uh, he's a winner. Um, again, may not score eighty plus points in the NHL, but that doesn't matter when you bring as many, when you compete and do as many things uh, physically, uh, mentally. Uh, he just he sparks teams, and he's uh, he's a great all around prospect that I think uh, is a legitimate top ten uh, candidate as well. Um, Charlie Trethaway, 
another uh him and Hensler are the are the defensemen to keep an eye on 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 the uh on the US development team but like how many uh, there's got to be 8 to 10 close to like at least 8 kids on the development team this year to keep wow. an eye on that may go in the first round i mean so some of them drop off as a rule as the year goes along but it's a lot stronger crop than last year and uh Trathaway's one of those uh you know one of the ones that has a really good shot at going top 20 uh certainly top 32 mm -hmm. now vilchinski i i mean we'll, we'll we'll see but he's six six uh skates quite well got a physical edge to him played for uh, demodov's team played regularly i saw him in um uh, they had a couple tournaments. Um, I saw the games live, and they ended up actually not even going up on Instat. Uh, so I was glad that I, I watched them live on some uh, Russian site. Where, uh, uh, you got all kind of viruses now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm still paying for it, but I, I got to see a few guys. Like Cole was playing in that, and uh, Shokrin, and a few kids that I uh, ended up ranking fairly high uh they had a they had trees on their on their defense it was like <laughs> five of their six were six four plus and uh two of them were underage like 16 year olds and one of them was vilchinski and he stood out like a sore thumb he's mm -hmm. uh there's a lot of potential there i mean anytime you got a mobile six six defenseman uh scouts are interested right so uh i don't know obviously it's early and i don't know if he's a first round you know we'll we'll get that sorted out as the year goes along but just at first glance from last year and then again looking at some tape quickly today he looks like uh he looks like a first round uh candidate for me mm -hmm. uh and at the end there, gonna have to figure out what the middle name is um jacob uh we'll just call him jake wozniak for now yeah. Uh, Jakob Wozniak. I don't know if he plays tennis too, but he, uh, Carolyn, yeah. Uh, uh, Swedes have three legitimate first round, uh, forwards this year, which is nice because last year they didn't. And, um, it'll be nice to, uh, be nice to keep a close eye on those guys. Uh, we'll get to see them, you know, uh, quite a bit. They typically have, uh, you know, they're sending most of these guys to the World Junior Challenge that goes on in addition to the Holenka, in addition to the uh, Four Nation Cup tournaments that go on throughout the year, and then the U18s at the end. So I might see him in about four or five tournaments, like all the Swedes, and uh, that's always a good oh, yeah. always a good litmus test. So I'll... I'll have a really good uh, handle on his uh, potential by the end of the year. So that's uh, that's 25 names. There we go. I couldn't come up with 32 legitimate at this time. And uh, typically, there's only, I mean, it was the case last year and just about every year, and scouts say it's anywhere from 18 to 22 guys you're comfortable with by the end of the year as being legitimate first-round guys. Mm -hmm. And then after that, every team's got a completely different list of who, uh, you know, it could be a guy that uh, one team has ranked 23 and another team has him 45, right? So, but I think of those 25 names, uh, most of them will uh, likely end up being top 40 picks, um, but there's always changes. There'll be a couple right. of guys that drop out. And certainly there always is a bunch of guys that impress and move up as the year goes along. But uh, at least 20 of those kids uh, are probably going to be first round picks or are darn close to it. There you go. There you go. Well, that's your first look of the 2025 draft class. We, we haven't yet flipped the page, right? We're not fully on there just yet. I think, I think that turning point is the link of Gretzky where, okay, we're in the 2025 draft class now. We'll still touch on the 2024 guys a bit here and there, uh, but we're pumping out content every week, even, even in the middle of July, okay? We don't stop. 
we do not stop. Um, sunburnt, sunburnt or not? It's listen. This this is just too much fun. This is too much fun. So we we're, we're going to keep doing it, and and as long as you guys enjoy it, we're here. We're here. Um, listen, I mean, looking at this list, obviously James Hagen stands out, right? He's he set the point the points record at the U 18s Like, <laughs> I think he's yeah. I think he's off to a pretty good start. Uh, so it's, I I you know I think first overall is his to lose at this point. But you know what, Porter Marton is is right on his tail, and you mentioned. Uh, 23 other guys that you know are are, are going to stand out this season. So uh, very excited for this. Very excited, but uh, you know what? This this is the place to be, Grant. This is the place to be right here. Sick podcast recruits draft cast all year long. All year long, we're going to be covering these guys. All the tournaments, we're going to be posting clips. Okay, you heard what Grant said earlier. We're, we're going to be posting footage. So you want to you want to subscribe you want to ding that bell like Grant said, um, uh, trust me, it'll be worth it. And listen, I mean Grant Grant's been on a roll here. Okay, he predicted Slav, predicted Rhinebacker, and this year he said, "Hey, keep an eye out on Seneca at three. I mean, <laughs> come on, come on. At one at, at one point, it's not just a coincidence. Okay, it's hard work." <laughs> and this man knows his stuff. So um, that'll do it for us this week. A bit of a shorter show, but it's the middle of July, right? Not, not a ton to talk about. So um, yeah, go, go stick your head in the freezer there. <laughs> said, I'll go, I'll go put some aloe on my face. Uh, okay, so good. for Grant McCag, and thank you to producer Jimmy as well. Uh, I'm producer Shane, and this has been another edition of the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast. Until next time, take care. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.